Alright everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm bringing you an updated Dark Magician build. Um, I, I'm going to celebrate reaching 100 subscribers. Uh, I just reached 100 subscribers. Uh, I think I'm at 104 now, um, just recently. So I just wanted to commemorate the moment by bringing you an updated Dark Magician build. I've been playtesting this a lot. Um, at the end of the video I will uh, show you some replays. Um, uh, the matches are against Mermo and Rockets, I think it is. Um, so I'll dive right into the, uh, into the profile and I'll explain my reasons why and ratios and stuff like that. And let's just get in it. So we play one Dark Magician, one Mago Nero and one Mago Negro. So we've got the English, Italian and Portuguese Dark Magicians. And we do play the one Dark Magician girl. Um, it's just we play her uh, because it makes our the Dark Magicians more live, and also it makes a Soul Servant potentially like a Pot of Greed. Um, she doesn't really brick all that much because nine times out of ten you're going to be dumping her with a Magician Souls just to be able to get that extra draw and stuff. And if you've got Dark Magician in the hand. There's no point in having one in the grave really. So we play them. We play free Apprentice Illusion. I feel now the the way that the deck's built and stuff, the Apprentice does come up a lot more, especially with that magician uh, girl floating about in the deck. Uh, be it for her just to be the fodder to special summon this out to get a dark magician to hand. Um the honest effect does come up. Um, but she does help us link claim and stuff and load up the graveyard with Magician's Navigation and stuff. So I feel like uh, she should be played back at 3. I was playing her at 1 and 2 and stuff, and, but now I'm a lot happier having her at 3. Then we play the Stratos of the deck, uh, Magician's Rod. So Rod searches out 90% of your deck and also has a summon effect from the graveyard to tribute. A uh, special summoned spellcaster monster does come up a lot and it helps you reoccur um, resources and it's always good to be able to get a Stratos back in into your hand to use in the next turn. And also if you've only got one Dark Magician floating around, then it means that your Eternal Soul's loaded up for the next turn. Then we play the Foolish Burial of the deck, the Pot of Greed um, sometimes, and also the first turn Dark Magician to be able to special summon them out um, or Dark Magician Girl so Magician Souls mandatory at 3 um, and we played the one Spellbook Magician of Prophecy um, I just feel like everything special summons really that just having a fourth normal summon monster is always good and plus he can turn into a, a plus to be able to dig for your deck for secrets and knowledge Hand trap lineup, uh, an orthodox lineup of two Ash Blossom, two Effect Veiler, and two Nibiru. I feel like these are the best hand traps to deal with mostly every deck in the format. I feel like having three of each is extremely bricky in this deck. So we do want to see more pieces to be able to combo off with the Dark Magician engine. So I feel like two each is perfect and does less, ch less chance of opening doubles in your hand. And plus, Effect Dealer is basically the main combo starter for, because we do play I mean, Needle Fiber, so he's a great extender. Now on his spells, we play three the Magical Circle. And now the best spell of the deck, Soul Servant. It's basically Dark Magicians, if you don't know what it does, um, it helps you, lets you stack the top of your deck and if you have Dark Magician in the graveyard and Dark Magician Girl you can draw for each of the ones in the graveyard so if you've got both of them in the graveyard then it means that you get to draw two so in a way it is kind of like a uh, mobilised engage in terms of being able to choose what you want to get and if you've got like engage having three spells in the graveyard if you've got a Dark Magician Dark Magician Girl in the grave you get an extra bonus draw so definitely free of. Then we play two spellbook secrets, two spellbook knowledge, and two gold by the graves. 
Uh, Cold by the Grave is just a great defensive and offensive card. Um, it's the same uh, scenario with the hand traps. I just feel like having two is a lot better than having a having, uh, bricked on three. Um, the one odds, we play one Secret of Dark Magic. So this is just the fusion spell of the deck. And then we play one Fusion Deployment. So this card lets a special summon a Dark Magician or Dark Magician Girl directly from the deck. So it is really good. I feel like it's better than what uh, Upstart Goblin would have been in the deck and stuff. So definitely I would recommend you test this card out because it does help uh, build up your soul servants and stuff by being able to get out a Dark Magician Girl from the deck if you've dumped one way. Magician Souls and vice versa. So we'll definitely test this card out. Now one of the traps. We play three eternal soul and the one navigation. Uh, navigation does come up uh, now and again when you draw it. Um, and if you have no way of actually getting it dumped into the graveyard. But primarily we want it for the negation of a spell and trap. And also because of the Dark Magicians. It's actually really good to, to be able to summon out both Dark Magician and Dark Magician Girl to be able to use Soul Servant to get two draws and also with the Dark Magicians he, they, he can just bring the two of them back when he's destroyed uh, by battle or card pick so be it pop with Eternal Soul. And the last two trap cards we play is two Storm Strike. I feel like Storm Strike is good going first, um, it's good going second so I, I feel like it's better than what Judgment is and it's less a risk um, if you are going to go second. Uh, definitely take a side in the Judgment for cards like Lightning Storm, Evenly Match, stuff like that. So that's the main deck. We'll move into the extra deck. We play the one, the Dark Magicians. And Dark Magician, the Dragonite. Nine times out of ten, you're going into the Dark Magician, the Dragon, eh, uh, the Dark Magician, sorry. Just because of the reoccurrence with the Dark Magician, the Dark Magician Girl, the free draws on your turn and your opponent's turn, and be able to set something that you've stacked with, be it Soul Servant or with your Dark Magical Circle, it is really good to have. And it, I feel like he's more, he is more generic to be able to just have a Dark Magician or Dark Magician Girl in the normal summon rod, set sure the fusion, fusion spell and he helps you get more cards into your hand so very rarely do I go into him but there is certain times that he is clutch and we play the one Ebon Illusion and the one Narito, the Moral Leader just in certain matchups, um, primarily we don't go into these, it's more link claiming we do or the fusion, uh, these will just win more buttons uh, if I'm honest, depending on the setup that we have, or if we try, if we're winning, uh, outgrinding our opponent, and this just solidifies uh, the win for us. Synchros, uh, we play TG1 the Magician and Formula Synchron. If our Needle Fiber gets ashed, and we're just left with the Link 2 lump, then we can synchro out of these, get a free draw on each of them or a pop of a spell and trap with TG Wonder Magician. So it all depends on the matchup. Link ones we play one Link Repo. We play the one Relinquished Anima and the one Link Spider. Just to help us uh, reload the graveyard um, with the Dark Magicians. Uh, one Anima and Link Repo just for your Magician Souls targets and stuff. And with Anima, it still means that you can go into cards like Crow the Crowley because he has a spellcaster. So it helps clear the board. Still got a spellcaster to be able to go into Crowley to get uh, extra resource and stuff. So definitely use that. Then we play the one Needle Fiber, the one Nightmare Phoenix, and we play the one Nightmare Unicorn as well as Selene and Access Code Talker. So Selene is absolutely amazing in this deck. Um, when I first read Selene and seen her, I didn't really think much of her, but the advantage that you can gain because it's during your turn and your opponent's turn. 
So sometimes when I've used Dark Magician, uh, the Dark Magicians and sent it to the graveyard, I'll use Selene to bring uh, them out. So that means it's an extra disruption if they're destroyed and also we can bring out a Dark Magician. So that way we can save our Eternal Soul that's face down. From, uh, so we can use her effect to trigger the Dark Magical Circle to get the banished so that way we don't get MST and destroy our entire board and we lose advantage. And access code talker is just outstanding for clearing boards. And when you have a the Hulk to be able to get out the needle fiber, and no, the sorry the effect builder to then bring out Celine, Celine to bring out access code talker by bringing something back from the graveyard to be able to start popping off. So the way that we can do it is we can end up with free a. A one link one, a link two, and a link three. So that's three pops that can't be responded to. So access call talker is absolutely superb in this deck. So that is the deck profile. Um, I will show you some replays um, right now, and then I'll get you an end credits. Cheers, everybody. And thanks for sticking around, uh, and I hope you've enjoyed uh, those replays. Um, it just shows a couple of combos and some ways that I play the deck, and how some interactions happen. So I do hope you've enjoyed the video. Please give it a like and subscribe now. I'm aiming to get 200 um, subscribers now that I've broke the 100 barrier. So let's see if we can keep on going. Thanks everybody. Cheers, peace.